coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. Sermons will not help you as a preacher when a situation hits your body. Sermons will not help you when your love work is tested. Sermons will not help you when there's need or lack in your home. You must have the time you set aside yourself as a believer. First, you are a believer before you became a pastor. Nigeria, the most populous black nation of the world with over 250 ethnic groups. Nigeria, the giant of Africa. Come witness her cultural elegance in dancing, drama, songs, and the world. At our National Day celebration 2019, on the 29th of September by 9 a.m. Venue is the Carpenters Church, Greenville, the Carpenters Drive, off Ajib or Iwafe Road, my four, Rumeme, Potakos. The depth of the challenge we face is chronic. Our minds have been compromised. Only you, not any government, have what it takes to solve corruption in this nation. We are Nigerians. We, we are Nigeria. We, we are Nigeria. We are Nigeria. Regardless of the storm, regardless of the hurricane, hold fast to the word of God, church. Hold fast. Don't be like those who waver. Don't be like those who change their confession when things don't seem to be going the way they want. You're not a spoiled brat. You are a son. The sports brats that complain. And hey, mommy, I thought this thing would be like this. Shut up. It's our house. So let's fix it together. You're not a sports brat. You're a child of God. But you must hold fast to your confession of faith. You must keep the word. Amen. Amen. Many things are contending for the word. And we saw that in the wayside, the stony and the thorny ground. What is contending for the word in the wayside? What was it? Satan, the birds of the air, isn't it? Came and picked up the word before the word even landed properly. So Satan is a problem against your, the word. Then the stony ground, stones. Oh, offense, persecution, tribulation. Contended for the word. And there was no depth of earth for the word. Thorns. Ooh. The cares of this life, prosperity, prioritizing the wealth and abundance God has given you, your, your schedule, the big business God has given to you, these are all things contending for the word. So what do you do if you are holding fast? You should be fighting all these things, right? That's what most of us think. So if you're going to be a good believer, a good disciple, I will fight Satan and I will block or the offense. So you spend all your focus and your energy, get this please, fighting these things that are contending with you for the word. No, no. Your success as a good ground disciple doesn't lie in how you fight the things that are contending with you for the word. It lies in how you hold fast to the word. Take your eyes off Satan. Take your eyes off offense. Take your eyes off all these things contending with you for the word and keep your eyes on the word. If you keep your eyes on the word and you focus on the word, even when those things are stupid enough to come against you as temptation, you will recognize it from a distance and the word will in you will repel it. And if it tries to stay around you, you are holding fast to the word, those things will melt away. They will not stay with you. But many times we take our eyes off the word and we are fighting these things by our power and our might. And that's how we end up going to all these useless places, prayer houses, 
churches that do things that have no scriptural basis because their focus is not on the word but on the things that are after you. The things can only come after you and succeed with you if you are empty. But if you've got the word of God and you've accepted the word of God and the word of God lives and abides in your home and in you and you hold fast the word of God, there is a blessing the word of God generates that those things cannot stay near you. And even if those things attempt to come because symptoms and all these things will always come, the word of God will repel them. And you'll be saying, ah, I used to be bound to this problem, but it's been eight months and nothing has happened. What happened? You stayed with the word. You held fast with the word. And you find that those things just find their level. They crawl away. They go away completely because of that. So that is what the word of God can do for you, church. Amen. You must hold fast to the word of God. Look at your neighbor and say, hold fast to the word of God. So it's not about fighting stones and rocks and Satan. It's about holding on to the word. It's about holding on to the word. Don't let go of the word, church. I said don't let go of the word. Regardless of the pressure, these are the last days. These are the days where people do not want to stay with the word. But you are children of God and you know what the word of God can do. So hold on to the word of God. So next question, and we'll close with this one. How then, how then do you hold fast to the word? We've said you must accept the word and you must also keep the word. You must hold fast to it. So what does it mean to hold fast? What does it mean to hold fast to the word? Is it to take your Bible and hold it fast to your chest? Are there still people in this church who believe they can't sleep well if the Bible is not under their pillow? I will not ask you to raise your hand. They feel if I don't have my Bible under my pillow, I will have a bad dream. And the day you don't sleep with your Bible under your pillow, you will really have a bad dream. Because your expectations will not be caught up. <laughs> so what if your Bible is an iPad? If the battery is flat, is it still a Bible? Someone said no. <laughs> is it still a Bible? So it means that if you're about to sleep and your iPad is not charged, you cannot sleep or you will put, you will plug it and put it with the plug under your pillow and then be electrocuted. <laughs> because you needed to have the Bible. My point is, it's not about the physical Bible. I was telling them in the first service about a brother who was so excited and such a lovely new convert at that time. And Pastor Charles and I were helping him, counseling with him in something. And he was telling us how he, you know, used to go out and minister to people and evangelize with them. And he had a big Bible. You know, the bigger the Bible, the more the power. <laughs> you know, Gideon does not have power. You have to have a big... Barista, where is that your Bible? That kind of barista Bible, big, black, intimidating. Hold it like this, they know that you are a man of God. So this brother carried this heavy Bible. And he met a particular person who obviously was demon-possessed. <laughs> And I think it was the first time he had met, I think he, that she knows who I'm talking about. It was the first time he had met somebody who had that kind of problem. And he was telling us, Pastor, I showed him. So we're there thinking we'll hear how he said, Demo, come out in the name of Jesus. The guy took his Bible and began to beat the man. <laughs> come out, come out. Come out. <laughs> you know that kind of thing, when you hear it, you're not be asking yourself as a pastor, do I just leave him in his zeal to discover later? Or do we correct it now early before he goes around beating up people in church with his Bible? <laughs> it's not in the physical Bible. When he says hold fast, it's not by holding the Bible. To you. you should have your Bible, it's true. You should love your Bible, but, you know, listen, listen. To hold fast to the word is to make a commitment to renew your mind by the word of God. That's what it means to hold fast to the word of God. And that's where a good proportion, unfortunately, of the church, especially the Nigerian church. I will speak about the Nigerian because that's my country. Unfortunately, the word of God is not being given its priority in the Nigerian church. A lot of gimmicks, a lot of appendages, a lot of things that don't make sense, that don't make scripture, but make fantasy and make spectacular events. No. If you're going to hold fast to the word and see consistent increase in your life. See God's glory on display in your life. You must hold fast to the word of God. You can't have a situation where you change your confession because something changed in your life. 
Yeah, some of you, you are, you are talking the word. The very next minute, you are cursing the word. You say, I will never curse the word. When you speak your circumstances, you are cursing the word. Ah, pastor, that is heavy. I will say it again. The word of God that says, by his stripes you were healed. And then you say, this sickness will kill me. What have you done with that word? It has no basis, has no blessing, has no power in your life. None whatsoever. So to hold fast to the word is to make a commitment to renew your mind with the word of God. Don't get so busy that you busy yourself out of the word of God. Pastor Shola and I were at a minister's conference last week. Was it last week or the week before? The week before in the UK. And that conference is always very refreshing each time we go for it. And one of the things that we brought back as reminders to ourselves from the ministers, seasoned old ministers who spoke, was that you can never get so busy for God that you get too busy for the word in your own life. There are some preachers who only open their Bible when it's time to look for a message. You're on dangerous ground. You're not holding fast to the word. You're just looking for sermons. Sermons will not help you as a preacher when a situation hits your body. Sermons will not help you when your love work is tested. Sermons will not help you when there's need or lack in your home. You must have the time you set aside yourself as a believer. First, you are a believer before you became a pastor. You are a believer now before you are a leader or a church member. If you don't spend time with the word of God, when the hurricane comes, there will be nothing for you to hold on to. That's what it means to hold fast, to renew your mind with the word. So just keep taking in the word. Just keep taking in the word. And your opinions will begin to change. Your thinking will begin to change. Your circumstances will be drawn like a magnet to align themselves to the word of God. You just find things moving. It's just like when you put a magnet and you put some iron fillings around it. After a while, the fillings start coming closer and closer and closer to the magnet. That's what the word of God in your life does. But you must keep the word active in your life. You can't have the word dormant and expect the word to work for you. You put on the radio in your car and it's always some Owigri station playing or some funny thing happening in Port Harcourt you are listening to. Take a CD and play it. Play word music. Just surround yourself. Your mind is constantly absorbing. Your mind is a sponge. It's always taking in stuff. The point is, what are you feeding your mind? What you want yourself to see, that's what you begin to feed your mind with. That's what it means, church, to hold fast, to renew your mind with the word of God. Romans 12, 2 tells us, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. Everybody say transformed. transformed. Say it again. Transformed. By the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 2 Corinthians 3.18, closely related verse. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the, sorry, 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 into the same image, <laughs> from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Transformed, transformed. That's the Greek word meta, pay attention, morpho. Meta, morpho. Meta is to change. Morpho is a form. So to change the form of something is to metamorpho. And if you did biology, that's where you get the word metamorphosis or metamorphose. What is metamorphosis? Or for example, an adult butterfly. It starts from an egg, then it goes to a larva, then it goes to pupa, then it goes to where? Imago or image. We are transformed into the same imago, the same image of God. How does that happen? Beholding us in the mirror. Renewing your mind with the word of God. Taking in the word of God. Deciding this November, I'm going to read and meditate on the book of Ephesians. And Ephesians it will be. And you break up the whole 30 days in, of November. You take the six chapters of Ephesians and you break them up. And you take the chapter and you read it and you read it and you read it and you chew it. Something is happening. You started as an egg. Before the end of the month, you're shifting towards a lava. Now get this. 
the lava, the egg, the pupa is not any more a butterfly than the butterfly. It's the same, they're all butterflies. It's just in a different form. So, the renewal of the mind is not making you into who you are not. It is transforming you into who you already are. The renewal of the mind is not making you into who you are not. Hey, hey, I'm a fornicator. This fornication problem really, really has been disturbing me. Okay, they say I should renew my mind. As I keep renewing, reading the Bible, and, and I will be drinking anointing oil, I'll just be doing anything I need to do so that I will no longer be a fornicator. Lie, you are not a fornicator. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But it's in your spirit. Your body might be fornicating. But self-control is in your spirit. You are complete in him. As he is, so are you. So if Jesus has a self-control problem, then so do you. If Jesus has a fornication problem, then so do you. So your problem is not a fornication problem. Your problem is that everything that you are is in your spirit. And you have refused to take the process of renewing your mind to pull out that thing in your spirit that you already are into your day-to-day -day existence. So you are not a poor man trying to get rich. You are a rich man. But all the wealth and grace and goodness of God was deposited in its fullness in your spirit when you got born again. But of what use is healing in your spirit when your body has symptoms? Of what use is righteousness and self-control in your spirit when you keep falling into fornication and smoking and drinking? And of, of what use is the love of God in your spirit if you keep getting offended and angry at people? How then do you become who you already are? This is why some of us are not successful in our attempts to renew our mind. We are renewing our mind by power and might, like we're trying to become something. You already are it in God. The word is the bridge. The word is the journey. Taking in the word is the journey from the spirit realm to this realm. And it's just a journey for this earth existence. Because when you die, that perfect spirit you is going to be with the Father for the time you'll be in heaven. So while you're here, why does God bother you with renewing your mind? So you can live the fullness of life more abundantly here on earth. Glory be to God. That's what holding fast to the word is. Renewing your mind so that you can be transformed into who you already are. You may start as a physical egg, but inside you is a big butterfly. But you need to make that process. And church, it is a process by the renewing. It's a present continuous tense of the word of God. Can somebody lift their hands and give him praise? Lift your hands and give him praise. Lift your hands and give him praise. The word of God will bring about increase in your life. It will bring about a complete change in you under the power of God. And that change will be seen in your character and in your conduct. The change will come. Relax in him. Why are you fretting? Why are you panicking? There's more change going on in you than you realize. Haven't you seen that some things that happened to you now, the way you responded was different from what you did last year? Haven't you seen that the way you spoke was different from the way you spoke five years ago? Was there lightning and thunder? Was there fireworks? No. There was just the consistent taking in of the word as seed and letting the word be watered and letting the God factor, the grace of God, the goodness of God come into operation in your life. And as that happens, there will be change. There will be increased church. Look at you, people that God is increasing. <laughs> Look at you, people who are increasing by the word. Look at you, people who have a target or a mission of the word sent at them. When the word comes, 
and says children are your heritage and the fruit of the womb is your reward. Don't stop at one child and be grateful. Be grateful for one child, but go for more. There are more children in you. Pull them out by the word of God. If you want more children, if you want abundance, if you want long life, don't buy that lie that it is just the quality of your life that matters. The quantity is not important. I will have both quality and quantity of life. Long life and good healthy life. I'm not going to take short life because there are people who are old, who are sick. No, I will not be sick and old. I will be healthy, wise, all my faculties in intact and live as long as I desire to live. That is the word of God I have accepted into my home. That is the blessing of God in my home. That is what lives in my home. And that is what I believe and continually embrace and hold fast to. But church, there are things contending with you for the word. But you must keep the word. You must accept the word. You must hold fast to the word of God. The word is never late. Somebody needed to hear that. The word is never late. The word is never late. Sometimes God says yes. Sometimes God says no. Sometimes God delays. It's not true. If it is the will of God for you, he says yes all the time. And if you stay with the word and delight yourself in him, you will know the will of God for you. And he says yes. But then you stay with the word and you pull that yes out of the spirit realm and you pull it into physical manifestation. The word is never late. The word is never late. The word is never late. If you walk the word, the word will work for you. Lift your hands and give him praise. Thank him. Thank him for all he's told us today. Thank him. Oh, good grounds are popping up all over the place. Those of us who are wayside hearers and stony ground and thorny ground, we've seen what it takes to be a good ground disciple. And there are good grounds all over the place. And by our next message, we're going to see, which probably maybe will be the last part, we're going to see how the fruit is the culmination of being a good ground disciple. When the fruit actually shows up and you can see the fruit, you can touch it and you can see the manifested word in your life as a disciple. Lift your hands and give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise, church. Thank him for the privilege of knowing his word. Give him praise for the undiluted word. You have so many questions about your life and life in general. Why? When? How? What? Who? And the list goes on. Brother, Jesus is the answer to every question and he loves you just the way you are. He loves you too much to leave you this way. He's knocking on the door of your heart. Will you make a decision for a change today? To surrender your life to Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud, meaning it from the depth of your heart, according to Romans 10, 8-13, and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. We can help you grow in your new faith so that what has just happened on the inside will be surely reflected in your everyday life. Please call us at 0700 fresh you or email us at saved at freshtu.tv and we'll be here for you.
Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Nigeria, the most populous black nation of the world with over 250 ethnic groups. Nigeria, the giant of Africa. Come witness her cultural elegance in dancing, drama, songs, and the word. At our National Day Celebration 2019, on the 29th of September by 9 a.m. Venue is the Carpenters Church, Greenville, the Carpenters Drive, off Ajib or Iwafe Road, my four, Rumeme, Portacos. The depth of the challenge we face is chronic. Our minds have been compromised. Only you, not any government, have what it takes to solve corruption in this nation. We are Nigerians. We are Nigeria. We are Nigeria. We are Nigeria. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Freshdew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Freshdew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website, www.freshdew.tv. Once again, thanks for being with us today, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life. <laughs>